everyone, I'm Kelly with the Suburban Soapbox, and today we're making my favorite roasted citrus and herb butter turkey. This is the perfect turkey for Thanksgiving or any holiday, and it's super simple to make. Let's get started. So to make your turkey, you're just going to need a handful of ingredients. So we're going to need some citrus, and I like to use some navel oranges and some lemon. Uh, Granny Smith apple, I like the tartness of the apple. A little bit of garlic, some butter, and your favorite herbs. I like to use like fall herbs, so sage and thyme and rosemary. You can use any herbs that you like, but that's usually what I go with. So obviously you're going to need a turkey, any size turkey will do. You can look at my guide for cooking times for your turkey by weight. So right here I have a smaller turkey. Um, this one is a fresh turkey that I just bought at the grocery store. If you're going to buy a frozen turkey, you'll need to thaw it and you'll need to thaw it safely. So my tips for thawing is I like to leave it in the refrigerator for a few days and let it thaw very slowly. So to start, we're just gonna take the insides and put them into a pot. And this is what we're gonna use to make the gravy. And you can get the gravy recipe by clicking the link above. And that is made using the giblets. We're going to make the citrus herb butter and I just like to take a little bowl and we'll put room temperature butter in there. And your butter needs to be softened so that you can easily mash it up with the other ingredients. To our butter, we're going to add the zest of one orange. And I like to use a navel orange. I feel like they're juicier, but a good way to pick an orange is to pick one that looks like when you pick it up, it seems a little heavy for its size. That's gonna be a really juicy orange. And we're gonna add the juice from our orange right to the butter. And you just wanna catch any seeds that may come out. We're gonna do the same thing with a lemon. So you wanna zest your lemon and not your fingers. And I like to use a larger microplane for this so that you have big chunks of the zest. It actually adds a ton of flavor to your turkey. Oops, last one. That'll be the prize. Whoever gets the seed washes the dishes. Then I have a lot of fresh herbs from the garden. So here I have some sage. We put some in the butter and then some into the cavity of our turkey. And I just like to make like a big pile of my herbs and then I'm gonna run my knife through them just to chop them up finely. You don't want big chunks of your herbs. I've had this recipe on my website for about 10 years now and every year it gets rave reviews. It's a great beginner turkey so if you're not into like deep frying or you don't wanna get too fancy, this is definitely the way to go. And there's no brining. I know a lot of people like to brine their turkeys, but here's a fun fact. A lot of turkeys that you buy at the grocery store, especially if they're frozen, come in some type of salt solution or some type of brining. Fresh turkeys generally are not brined or not packed in that type of salt solution. So they do take well to brining, but they also take well to other methods of imparting flavor into your turkey. So that's why I like this citrus butter the best. Plus, fat equals flavor. And so, the more butter, the better. So we're going to add the herbs to the butter, and then we're also going to add three minced cloves of garlic. Take off the top, and you want some fairly large cloves of garlic if they're tiny. Like this bowl, this kind of sad. So I'm gonna add like two extras in there just for the flavor. Nobody's ever complained because there's been too much garlic. Not in my house. Smash them and then peel them. Smashing them makes the peel come off a lot quicker. And then we'll just mince these up real quick. 
This is the longest part of prepping your turkey, is actually making the butter. You can make the butter the night before and just store it in your refrigerator. Just cover it tightly, store it in the refrigerator, and then right before you're ready to make your turkey, take it out, let it sit for about 30 minutes at room temperature because you need the butter to be softened in order to spread it all over your turkey. So my recipe on my website says a pinch of salt. That's not a pinch. You actually need a lot of salt because we're not brining it, so we need to put probably about two to three teaspoons of salt in there. It sounds like a lot, but it's not. It'll be evenly distributed over your turkey, and then it'll actually cook off a little bit while it's roasting. So we're gonna add a little bit of pepper, or a lot of pepper, and just mix all this together. So you wanna make sure all of your ingredients, even your citrus, are room temperature, because if you're gonna add the citrus juice to your butter, and it's cold, it's just gonna seize up your butter. It's not gonna mix together really well. It's all pretty well incorporated. I'm gonna clean up my space, and then we're going to prep the turkey. Okay, so we're ready to prep our turkey now. And I patted this dry with a paper towel. It's like, you don't wanna wash it or anything. So people that wash your chicken or your turkey, stop washing them. There's no point in doing that. All you're doing is spraying like poultry juice all over your kitchen, it's really nasty. So don't do that. We're going to season the inside and then we're going to rub this butter all over the outside. Just wanna sprinkle some salt in there. And I would do pepper too, but I need two hands. So we're gonna pretend there's pepper in there because I don't want any cross contamination. So we're going to lift up the skin on the turkey. And you wanna do this by just kind of gently pulling the skin up. And you're gonna poke your fingers in there. And you can feel it separating. And try not to poke a hole like I did. You can wear gloves to do this. That'll also help keep your fingernails going through. And then you wanna get on the leg too. Make a little pocket, and that's where all that butter is gonna go. So we'll do this side too. If you do it with a smile, it's not so bad. So now you're just gonna take some of that butter and press that in there. You can leave clumps of it. It won't matter because once you put it in the oven, it's gonna melt all over the turkey breast. You can kind of like press it down and you can see it through the skin. And it'll definitely get down in there, so no worries there. And then the, whatever you have left over, we're just gonna spread on the outside. And it's kind of getting a little cold, so it's a little hard to spread. You can definitely just like melt it in the microwave and then spread it all over, kind of like olive oil. But you want to make sure you get like every part of the turkey, even if it's like not really spreading very well, it's getting onto the legs and the wings and everything. So now that we have our butter all over, we're going to wash our hands and then we're going to come back to this and I'm going to show you how to like make it look pretty. How I like to prepare my turkey for roasting is I usually put this in like a deeper roasting pan, but for purposes of this video so you can kind of see everything, I'm going to leave it on this baking sheet. So I like to tuck the wings underneath the breast. And the reason I tuck the wings, other than it makes it look really pretty, is these little tips are gonna burn in the oven and they'll be the first things to turn black. I like to stuff my turkey with aromatics, herbs, citrus, kind of everything that I put into this butter, but I also like to add a Granny Smith apple. It just adds a little tart hint to the turkey, not like, you're not gonna taste the apple, but it just adds a little bit of tartness to it. Also amplifies the moisture, so you're not going to have a dry turkey. So we're just gonna cut my apple into chunks. And we're just gonna stuff it inside. And then we're gonna cut the orange also. I like to cut the orange into quarters. 
just fits a little bit better in there. If you have a sticker on it, let's take the sticker off. Again, the citrus adds a really nice flavor to your turkey. And the juice keeps it nice and moist. I don't like to put a traditional stuffing or dressing in my turkey. To bake the dressing or stuffing, whatever you're putting inside, to a temperature that makes it safe to eat, you're going to overcook your turkey. So I like to stuff it full of aromatics, things are, that are going to enhance the flavor of your turkey, and then cook my stuffing or dressing separately in a baking dish. And then everything comes out perfect. You don't have a dry turkey. I think a lot of times the dry turkeys that I've had, like at my grandmother's and stuff when I was younger, they always had stuffing inside, and yeah, it looks pretty and it's impressive, but keep that dressing on the side. Do everyone a favor and then you won't have dry turkey. And then I have the garlic. I just cut it in half, and I'm gonna stuff everything in there. And then we're gonna stuff it with some herbs. Now I'm going to truss the turkey. I'm gonna tie the legs together so that it cooks evenly. I like to use a cotton kitchen twine to tie my turkey legs together. Okay, so I like to just Crisscross them and tie them together. And again, nothing fancy. There's like a skill to trussing that I never had. And so this is just how I do it myself. Okay, wash your hands again and then we're going to season with salt and pepper and then pop it into the oven. Now that our turkey is all ready to roast, we're going to pop it into a 500 degree oven. I like to sear my turkey all over on the outside, get it nice and golden brown. That seals in all the juices so that it's not just like leaking all of the turkey flavor into the bottom of your pan. Once you've roasted your turkey at 500 degrees for 30 minutes, you're going to turn the heat down to 350, and then you're going to finish roasting it. So generally, the turkey will take about two to two and a half additional hours. So you're looking at about three hours tops to cook your turkey. Make sure once you get to the end of that cooking time, you're going to check the temperature of your turkey in the thickest part of the thigh. So you want an instant read thermometer. I like to use a digital thermometer. I'll put the link to that at the bottom in the comments. You can just click on that and purchase it. You'll be ready to go for the holidays. Time to roast. All right, so our turkey is done. And I made this little foil turkey breastplate, if you will, out of aluminum foil because it was getting a little dark. So keep an eye on your turkey while it's baking. And if your turkey breast starts to get like a little more brown than you think it should be, you can definitely cover it with a bit of foil. The reason I made it like this to cover just the breast is because I wanted the legs to still cook. The legs will be the last thing to cook or to roast. They'll roast a little more slowly than the breast. You don't want the breast to be dry and overcooked, so I let this rest for about 30 minutes, and we're ready to carve it. I'm going to use two sturdy forks. I used to have a unitasker, which was a turkey lifter, and it somehow has vanished from the house. So just want to make sure it's not stuck to your roasting rack. And you don't have to use a roasting rack. I used a roasting rack because I have it, and that's the only reason I used it. Alrighty, lift it, take some muscle. Save all these nice drippings for your gravy. Put that off to the side. So I like to present my turkey just on a simple white platter and kind of dress it up with some herbs and citrus and cranberries, cranberries because it's the holidays. And I like the citrus and the herbs that we used in the turkey so you kind of get an idea of 
what this turkey is flavored with. So that is the whole idea of the herbs and the greener and everything. It makes a beautiful centerpiece for your dining table, an edible centerpiece. If you need to find out how to carve a turkey, check out my video on how to carve a turkey. So if you like this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. For more easy recipes, visit thesuburbansoapbox.com. Thanks again.